Hey, it's Jacob. We're looking at question number 60 from ACTA 9, uh, the December 2017 exam. And, you know, you could look at this and just say, oh, just plug them in. And for a lot of you, that would make sense. For many others, that means nothing. You go, what do I plug in? <laughs> I don't I don't know how to plug in. So I want to approach this from the point of view of a student who doesn't know what plug this in means and build up those fundamentals. So just a couple of things here. First off, hopefully we recognize uh, that radical minus one, that's just I, right? Uh, if you haven't encountered that before, we just call the square root of negative one i, okay? Um, so really this value that they've given us here is one plus i, all right? Um, if you've never worked with i before, this could be really problematic because somebody says, okay, we'll just plug these in and see which one works. Let's look at the first one, for example. Let's see if this is a solution, right? If that makes that equation true. So I'm gonna plug in one plus i squared uh, plus one is equal to zero. So one plus i squared, well, okay, maybe that i already looks weird to me, but I can foil, right? I know how to square things. Uh, so let's do one plus i times one plus i. By the way, really important that you write i as lowercase and with a dot, right? If I write one plus i like this, I, I have no idea when I'm doing my work what I'm looking at. Make sure you write it like this. Um, plus one is equal to zero, so I'm gonna foil, so that's one plus two i plus i times i, so that's i squared, plus one is equal to zero, i, two i, i squared. Okay, well, we do have some intuition, right? Because if i is the square root of minus one, uh, at least I know that i squared is certainly minus one, right? It's the square root of minus one squared. Uh, so this i squared becomes minus one. So I've got one plus two i minus one plus one equals zero. That's one plus two i equals zero. I don't think that that's true, right? Is two i equal to one, right? Twice the square root of minus one, is that, is that negative one? No, I don't think so. Um, so it's probably not f, indeed it's, it's not f. And I can go through and, and I can try each of those uh, and you know plug them in and, and hope that one works. This is an awesome example of a question that is way more easily solved with a calculator than by hand, right? Your TI-84 or your TI-83 will solve this in, you know, five seconds for you, okay? So two things, we want to know how to use complex numbers, right? Complex numbers are any numbers that are involving I. Uh, and the second thing we want to do on the calculator is know how to store variables uh, to, to enter into these expressions really quickly, okay? So let's look at that. Uh, if I'm dealing with one plus i, that's the value that I really care about, I'm gonna plug it into this equation, then maybe plug it into this equation, plug it into this equation. If you're ever using a value in multiple places, it's really good to store it as a variable. Um, so let's go on our calculator. I'm gonna take one plus, I wanna find i, 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 i. I'm gonna go to second and the dot. You'll notice the blue lowercase i here, that's i. So that's one plus i, and I'm gonna get this store button, we am going to store x. And when I hit enter, what that's going to tell the calculator is that now whenever I see x, what I really mean is 1 plus i, right? I'm just assigning that value uh, to the variable x. So now, if I calculate, for example, x squared plus 1, the calculator tells me what x squared plus 1 is. Hey, it's 1 plus 2i. That's not equal to 0, so f is wrong. Let's try choice G. Choice G says x squared, okay, x squared plus x plus one. Is that equal to zero? No, okay, let's try H. Uh, x squared minus x plus one. Is that equal to zero? No, it's equal to I. Okay, we're getting close. At least, at least we've only got two more. x squared uh, plus two x minus two. Now if this doesn't work, it's gotta be k and we move on. So that's four i. Uh, I'm just gonna check k for us if we do x squared minus twice x and then we add two. 
we'll find that that is indeed zero. Okay. Um, definitely, I wouldn't recommend oh start with k. That that's always going to be the right answer choice. It's pretty randomly dispersed. Uh, although it is, I believe, statistically shown that on the last ten or so of the math section, it's more often k. So it, it, in this case, it might have been better to start with the last answer choice. Either way, plugging this into the calculator takes, especially in the moment, all of 15, 20 seconds, right? So that makes this a really, really easy problem. Now, um, if this problem is really difficult for you, not because of the idea of plugging it and setting equal to zero, but the actual algebra of dealing with complex numbers, you definitely want to study those uh, because you are absolutely guaranteed to see algebra problems that deal with I, that deal with complex values. Um, so you could be asked something along the lines of, hey, you know, what's, what's I to the 24th? For example, um, what's you know one plus two i times three minus seven i or something like that? Right? There's there's lots of ways that you could be tested on your knowledge and understanding of those complex values. So make sure you do some practice, explore Khan Academy, get a good idea for the types of problems that could use that. Okay. There is one other way to solve this problem, uh, and that really requires that you have some decent knowledge of of complex roots. If we're dealing with a polynomial that has real coefficients, and all of these have real coefficients, right? One minus one, two minus, they're all real values, they're not complex. Um, then if any of your roots, right? And we can think of roots here because we're, we're setting equal to zero in all of these expressions, right? They're definitely roots because we're setting equal to zero. So if a root of your equation is uh, a plus bi, right? If a plus bi is a root of your equation, of your function, then a minus bi also has to be a root, right? So those are just called complex conjugates. We're switching the sign of the complex part. And so both of those are roots, which means that this function, right, x squared minus 2x plus 2, is going to be the product of the two roots, right? Actually, the two factors here. Uh, if you have factors, right, factor one, let's say root one, and factor two would be x minus r2, right? That, that gives you your polynomial uh, for x with those given factors. So I know the factors. They're one plus i, right? This was one plus i, that's our first root, so it's conjugate one minus i also has to be a root. So I could have said, okay, well, the first one is going to be x minus 1 plus i, and then that times x minus 1 minus i. And you'll go ahead and multiply those out. You can FOIL that, and you'll get x squared minus 2x plus 2, which again uh, gets us choice k here. That is, to me, a little bit troubling, right? When I, when I see this, when I see foiling and dealing with binomials within binomials, that worries me. I know that I'm bound to make an algebraic mistake. I'm really stressed. It's question 60 at the end of the exam. I really want to get it right and I've got 20 seconds left. Again, let the calculator do the work, but also understand that there are lots of different ways to approach this problem. And when you get in that stressful situation, so long as you know one and can start the problem, it's really likely you're going to be able to finish the problem, which is most important. So again, as always, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you feel good about these types of problems. If complex is at all complex, excuse my pun, uh, then go ahead and visit Khan Academy, search up complex values. Uh, think about, again, I to, to, to exponents think about foiling. And then the other thing is rationalizing denominators, right? Turning the denominators real. So for example, I have one over three minus i. How do I get that so that I have a real value on the bottom and not a complex? And uh, well, you just, you know, multiply by the, the conjugate over the conjugate. That always cancels out and leaves the real part. So just look at those problems if you haven't seen them before. Otherwise, this is a piece of cake, and you're going to get it right if you see something similar on the exam. See ya.